Praise the Lord. God is good tonight. We want to welcome everyone this evening. We thank you for joining us on our live stream. We just pray that you are blessed tonight. We just pray that you worship along there in your homes, just as if we were here in person. Let us pray tonight. Heavenly Father, we love you, Lord. We thank you for the freedom and ability to gather here in your house tonight. And I just pray, Lord, that your spirit would come down, not only in this place, Lord, but in each and every home where people are tuning in, Father. And I just pray that you would allow us to feel your presence, Lord, in a special way. Touch us, Lord God, and do what only you can do in our lives, Father. We look to you during these times and seek your face, Lord. We need you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sing along with us. Clap along there in your homes. Let's sing, uh, sing, sing, sing. Our praise tonight, amen. 
We just uh, we just thank you all once again for joining us. We thank you. We thank the Lord for His presence being here in this place. At this time, we want to turn the service over to our pastor to bring us a message from God's Word. Let us welcome him tonight. Praise the Lord. Good to be in the Lord's presence tonight. We thank you for joining us live stream. Pray that you're blessed today. You're safe. We love you. We're praying for you. We're lifting up the name of Jesus, asking him to watch over us and keep us. We thank him tonight for loving us so much. If you have your Bibles tonight, we want to turn with you to John, the 14th chapter. I'd like to read verse 25 through 27. How the message is the peace that Jesus gives. So I was praying the day that yesterday the Lord said, take a break from the blood for one service because somebody needs this. And we want to do what God says. Amen. These things, Jesus said, have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance that whatsoever I have said unto you, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Would you pray with me tonight? Father, we love you today. We thank you for your word. Thank you for the peace you give us. Lord, we enjoy it. We receive it. And Lord, we thank you abundantly for it. We pray, God, that every heart, every person is listening tonight, God, that has this peace brimming over in their heart. And God, we just ask you to touch every life. Minister, Lord, as only you can. Touch us, Lord, and strengthen us tonight as we try to glorify you. We love you, Jesus. We thank you for blessing us. Thank you for, protect, for protecting us. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings of our life. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Praise God. The peace that Jesus gives, verse 25 and 26, sound like Jesus is uh, getting ready to say farewell in his speech that he'll be leaving but verse 27 turns out a different kind of goodbye he said I'm going to leave something with you how different he's parting the world but this the importance of this one verse of scripture in our lives cannot be uh, talked about enough or lifted up enough there's a peace that passes understanding, and it comes from Jesus Christ. We love him tonight. We thank him for it. What a peace he yields, even in the midst of the storm. found this little article today <clears throat> that said, As the Prince of Peace, he brought it into the flesh, carried it about his own person, died to make it ours, left it as a heritage of his disciples upon earth. He implants and maintains it by the Holy Ghost that lives within us. And thank God for a peace that Jesus watches over, that he implants, that he carries out, that he makes sure is in our life. Every child of God is promised this peace. Jesus Christ is the executor of his own testament. He uh, leaves his, uh, he gives this peace to each and every one who loves and follows him. The Bible says, not as the world giveth. You see, the world doesn't give a true peace, maybe for a moment. But Jesus gives peace sincerely. He gives a substantial peace. and He gives it eternally. He doesn't give it today and take it back tomorrow. Thank God for the peace that Jesus gives that's real in our life that's real today, will be real tomorrow, no matter where you're at, no matter what you're going through, no matter what your circumstances, the peace of Jesus Christ is real. And it is for wherever you're at, whatever you're going through. The gift that he gives is peace. The nature of this peace, many times we, uh, we get confused about the peace that Jesus gives. You see, the peace that Jesus gives is not without strife. It's not without grief. It didn't, sometimes you don't have uh, relationships that are too much in harmony. 
But the peace of God should still be in your heart and in your life in spite of the strife and the grief and the contention that we go through sometimes. You see, <clears throat> this peace that Jesus gives is an inner state of calm. It's an order in our hearts that he gives that keeps us through trying times, keeps us through uh, cases of difficulty, guides us. You see, this quality, it appears in the midst of trouble, and it affects our relationships. Peace. Can I tell you, be a peacemaker, not a troublemaker. This kind of peace will affect every relationship that you're in. It'll affect the relationships in your family. It'll affect the relationships of friends. It'll reflect church relationships. Every relationship that you encounter on this earth, if you have the peace of God in your heart, it will affect that relationship in a positive way. You see, it is a quality which appears only when Jesus Christ gives it. Thank God for peace that passes understanding. Its quality, it is closely connected to Jesus Christ. You cannot have this peace without Christ living in your heart. Thank God for a peace that passes understanding. It touches our hearts. It changes our heart. It makes us individuals that are pleasing in the sight of the Lord. Thank God for peace. I could talk a lot about this gift and never cover it all. I may be brief on it, but thank God there's a peace that God gives us because of what Jesus Christ did. It is yours. You can claim it if you don't have it. You can ask for it. You can receive it. Jesus Christ will give it to you. For you see, Jesus is the giver of this peace. The peace of Jesus Christ is real. I don't know about you, but I've been through some things. When you are a Christian for a while, the devil doesn't like you if you are doing anything at all at any level for Jesus Christ. But can I tell you, the peace of God is real. I have experienced the peace when I've been in the valley. I know it's real when I've been climbing the mountainside. I know it's real when I've been in the valley. I know it's real when I've gone through troubles and trials. I know it's real when I've gone through persecution. I know it's real when I've been through grief. It is real tonight. And I tell you, it is for every born-again child of God on this planet. It's delivered on promise. Jesus promised us peace. When he was departing here, he told his disciples, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You see, it touches our hearts, it changes our lives, it continues. <clears throat> it's not just a one-time thing, but the peace that Jesus gives continues on in our life. I thank him tonight. <clears throat> the peace that the world pretends to give us is unreal. It's not really peace. It might be happiness for a moment, but that happiness soon fades away because circumstances change. The peace the world gives is undependable. <clears throat> you can't depend on the peace the world gives because it will desert you. It is temporary. It doesn't last. But the character of Christ's peace, calm and turmoil. When turmoil is swirling round about you, there is a deep peace within you <clears throat> that passes understanding that Jesus gives that helps us in a time of turmoil, in a time of upheaval, in a time of torment. There is a peace that passes understanding. It keeps our heart. It secures us in the love of Jesus Christ. It gives us steadiness in our purpose. You see, if you're going through life and you don't have a purpose in this life, if you'll give your life to Jesus Christ, He will give you a purpose. And He will keep you steady in that purpose. The peace that He gives will help you to stay on course. It will help you to continue... <clears throat> in the calling he has placed upon your life, the peace that Jesus gives will help you to be calm in the face of the storm. You see, when Paul was on his way to Rome, there was a storm. 
for 14 days and nights. But I can tell you, as I read that story, when I read about Paul, there seems to be a peace in his life that the sailors don't have. It talks about all the things they were doing, but it doesn't say what Paul was doing. But then all of a sudden, Paul says, There stood by me an angel of the night, <clears throat> last night, in whom I, the God of whom I served, to whom I belong to. And he said, If we'll just remain on <clears> the <throat> ship, excuse me, seems like my allergies are firing up again. <clears throat> Every life will be saved. And I tell you, they stayed on board. They did what Paul told them, even though they were tempted. And every life, not a life was lost. If we'll stay with Jesus Christ, we will find out that God will give you steadiness in your purpose. Paul was headed to Rome. God said, hey, Paul, you're going to get there. I sent you there, and you will get there. So wherever God is sending you, whatever he's asking you to do, he will help you accomplish it. He will give you, he will help you to be steady in your resolve to serve him and to fulfill God's purpose in your life. This peace will keep you right with the Father. I don't know about you, I don't know if you worry, if you get tore up, if you get upset, if you get angry. Sometimes if we're not careful, that anger will override that peace. We'll speak unadvisedly with our lips and get ourselves in trouble. But if we will let the peace of God reign in our heart, it will keep us right with God. It will keep us right with others. It will help us to be righteous before our Heavenly Father. Jesus gives this peace for a purpose, to keep us steady and on course in his kingdom. He wants us to live for him. He wants to have a relationship with us. And he gives us a peace that we can stand the storms, the torments, and the trials. You see, this peace is given by Christ. It's not something that's worked up. It's not something someone else gives you. It's not something you pick up at the store, but Jesus gives it. It's not something that's worked up in, in a shout or a service. Jesus gives us a peace that passes understanding. He gives it freely. <clears throat> he gives it fully. And he puts a finality on it. Whatever he gives, the world cannot disturb. If we will read the word and pray, the peace that Jesus gives us will hold us secure. It will hold us steady. <clears throat> and I tell you, this world is in a storm. I don't know, you probably read about Beirut, Lebanon, where the big explosion happened. There's turmoil there. There's turmoil in the United States of America. But deep in the heart of the Christian, we see all the turmoil going on. But in us, there's a peace. There's persecution on every hand. Christians are being killed in foreign countries. They're being persecuted. We've got it made in America. All they do is persecute us, tell us to shut the church down. But I tell you, Jesus Christ can give us a peace in the midst of the storm. And in this time we're going through, there's a peace that holds us steady, that holds us on course, that keeps us from sliding aside or backward. God, help us. Because you see this world, Jesus, the peace the world gives that Jesus was talking about, they give it grudgingly. They give it half-heartedly. Every once in a while, occasionally, they give this peace. But it doesn't last. But thank God the peace that Jesus gives lasts today, tomorrow, and forever. You see, the goal of this peace, I want to get to and talk about just for a few minutes. Let not your heart be troubled. The last part of that verse, the goal is... My peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give unto you. Why? So that our heart will not be troubled. So that our heart will not be afraid. You see, we allow a lot of things to get us all worked up sometimes that we shouldn't. We allow some things to rob us of a portion of that peace that we should not allow to steal from us. We allow things to affect us sometimes that shouldn't be. We should just let it roll off. Sometimes the Spirit of the Lord has to shake us to remember us that God's in charge. And if there's nothing I can do about the situation, if there's nothing I can do to make a change for the better, why am I getting so worried and bothered? You see, I don't know about you, I'm concerned about the choices some people make. 
I, I'm concerned about the choices that some people allow Satan to drag them into. I'm concerned about people that they get out a little bit and then the world draws them back in. I'm concerned about the demonic attacks against God's children and when they don't know how to fight back, when they don't have the word hidden in their heart, when they don't have the peace of God. You see, this peace can keep us in the midst of the storm, in the midst of sorrow, in the midst of trials, in the midst of things we don't understand. I don't know about you, but I go through some things sometimes that I don't know how I got there. I don't know why I'm there. I don't know how I'm going to get out. I don't know how I'm going to continue. But still there's a peace in my heart that I know Jesus Christ is in control, that he's watching over me, that he's going to help me, and I'm going to lean on him. You know, he's no respecter of persons. You can lean on him today. No matter what you're going through, the Lord said, Son, I want you to slow down here. This is for somebody that's listening tonight. This might be for some of you that's here with me, but you know, I tell you, there's a peace that passes under that will keep you in the midst of the storm. There are storms that are raging. There are storms that may be coming our way, but there's a peace that Jesus gives that will keep us. You see, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Now, there's a fear that gives us wisdom. I know not to go out here and walk across the street in busy traffic. I know not to do some things because I'm going to get hurt if I do them. There's a fear that brings wisdom. The fear of God brings wisdom, but there is an also a fear that Satan tries to bring in our heart that causes us to freeze up, to not do God's purpose, to not stay steady on the purpose that God has for us, not to continue with God. We don't need to allow that apprehension to find its way in our heart. We don't need to allow it to affect us to the point that it stops us and we cannot continue on for the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't let fear in your heart to grip you and take you off track. You see, we have to know this relationship with Jesus Christ is real. We have to know who he is. We have to know that he knows who we are and we can depend on him. It's not enough for us just to receive this peace, but we must maintain this peace. There's a formula that we must follow to maintain the peace, and if we will follow the formula, I'm not talking about if you just read it, I'm not talking about if you just memorize it, I'm talking about if you follow the formula, the peace of God, you can maintain it in your life. <clears throat> Starts in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. He repeated rejoice in the Lord there twice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. When you go to the Lord in prayer, don't hold back. Pour out your heart before Him. Pour out your soul, your spirit before Him. So then when we do, and the peace of God, which passeth, all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. <clears throat> Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. <clears throat> Those things which ye have <clears throat> both learned and received and heard 
and seen in me do. And the peace of God shall be with you. I love the scripture. I remember a time when Shirley and I were going through a storm. Satan did his best to destroy us before we could even get started to do anything for God. I don't know how we made it through those days. It was praying and fasting. But these scriptures, this scripture right here, helped to take our minds where it needed to go. It helped us to think about the things we need to think about. It helped us to do the things in spite of the storm, to do the things that we knew to do. Lord, help us to follow the formula that will keep peace in our life. I want to read it again. Because it is important, if, we, if you are in turmoil, if you are in strife, if you are in a, a situation that is overwhelming you, if you are close to being destroyed and you don't know which way to turn, read the scripture over and over and over again. Read the formula, then put it into practice. Rejoice in the Lord. Praise God. No matter what kind of a storm you're in, praise God. No matter what kind of a turmoil is going on in your life, give thanks unto the Lord that you know Him. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, Rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord's at hand. Let people know you love Jesus Christ and you're living for Him and you're on His side and no matter what's coming your way, you're going to serve God. The Lord is at hand to help us, to see us through. And I tell you, there's been a few times in my life He's carried me through the storm. I couldn't have made it on my own. We couldn't have made it. My family wouldn't have made it, but he picked us up and sheltered us and carried us through the storm. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand, and I'm going to serve him. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Praise the Lord. I don't know about you, but a lot of there have been a lot of times I just ask and ask and ask, and I never thank the Lord for anything. But this verse says, thank Him for what He's done. Thank Him for how He's moved in your life. Thank Him that you're a Christian. Thank Him that He's answered your prayers. He's worked miracles in your life. He's met needs that no one else could meet. He's reached down and touched you in the midst of the storm and sheltered you in his arm. Thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And when we pray that way, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, tells you how to think. Whatsoever things are true, praise the Lord, this virus we're going through, I hear all these things, I don't know what's true and what isn't true. You listen to a hundred different people, you get a hundred different opinions. But the Word of God is true. It hasn't changed. Whatsoever things are true, keep your mind on the Word of God. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do and the God of peace shall be with you. 
I don't know about you, but I need the Lord to be with me. Every day and every hour, the longer I serve the Lord, the more I lean on Him. The longer I serve the Lord, the more I know I need Him. The more, the longer I live for Jesus Christ, the more I know He's my source. He's my resource. He's the answer to my problems. He's the answer to my life. I depend on Him. Lord, help my mind to be on You and on the things that matter. When we do these things, a moment of uh, sorrow, a moment of trouble will not rob you of the peace of God. It is yours. Jesus give it to you. Remember that God gave his peace through Jesus Christ and what he did on Calvary to pay for our soul to redeem us and to set us free. I found this little saying by C.S. Lewis. He said, God cannot give us happiness and peace apart from himself because it is not there. There is no such thing. The only real peace we have is in Jesus Christ. And when we lean on him, when we trust him, there is a peace, Philippians says here, that passeth all understanding. And I tell you, when you come through the storm, when you get on the other side, and we're going to get on the other side of this pandemic there will be a day of victory it shall come to pass because the God we serve wants us to worship him in spirit and in truth I don't know how he's reshaping remolding remaking us through this time but I believe he's working on us to help us to be like him but thank God for the peace that we have through this troubled time that God is with us that we can lean on him we can trust him because he is faithful. God is faithful. He has proved it over and over again. These almost five months that we've been going through this thing as a church family, he has proved it over and over again that he is with us. Today as I was praying, I remembered that message in tongues and that interpretation right before all this started. I still remember the Holy, what the Holy Ghost said in part. He said, there will come a day you will praise me for what I have protected you from. You see, when he's protecting us from something, he's protecting us through something. Now that means I have to be wise. I have to take precautions. I have to do the things that are right. I have to be considerate of others. I have to have the peace of God to lead me and guide me. But can I tell you, the peace of God is real tonight. It's real in our lives. It's real in the life of the Christian. And if you are in turmoil tonight, ask Jesus Christ and he will fill you up with his peace. And you can maintain the peace of God if you follow the formula that's given to us in the word of God. The word of God is real. It's still as powerful today as it was when it was written to the church at Philippi. Thank God for his peace that passes understanding. I'm resting in him tonight. How about you? Tonight as we go to the Lord in prayer, if you need this peace, pray and ask God to allow the peace of God to come in your heart. In the turmoil, the turmoil may not stop. The strife may not cease. But I know that God can give you peace in the storm. And he will give you peace in the storm if you will ask him. Go with me to the Lord in prayer and ask God to touch your heart and your life and your family that his peace will reign there. Lord, I love you tonight. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your blessings. I thank you for the miracles you work in our life. And Father, tonight as we come to you in closing this message, I ask you to reach down your hand and Lord, wherever you're sending this message, God, let it find its place. And God, let that person find the peace of God that passes the understanding. In the midst of the storm, let that Lord, let them feel a peace that they've never known. God, there's some things we can't change, but you can. And until you change them, Lord, we rest in you and we rest in your peace. We give it to you, Lord. We lay it on the altar and we leave it there for you to do. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Praise God. It is
deserve the glory and the honor as we lift our hands in worship and we praise your holy name you deserve the glory and the honor as we lift our hands in worship and we praise your holy name for you are great you do miracles so Hallelujah, there is truly no one like our God, and there is no peace like the peace that He gives. Amen. We want to thank you once again for joining us. We want to thank you for worshiping along with us. We pray that you are blessed. We hope that you'll join us uh, here in a few minutes at 745 for our Spanish service. And uh, be sure to share the links out there so, more, so the word can get out there, so God's message of the gospel can get out there to people who need to hear it. Amen. Go and have a blessed week. <laughs>